one could listen to what you're saying and, and say, wow, you've really made the case for how we can't miss this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. We should just make sure that every single person doesn't have hypothyroidism, even if they're biochemically normal, mm -hmm. and even if their symptoms are kind of vague and could belong to something else. What's true for diagnosis, it's not true for treatment. Patients will come with a normal free T4, a normal TSH, and say, I'm hypothyroid because I feel tired. I have all the symptoms. I looked it up. I have all the symptoms of hypothyroidism. My body temperature is low. I gain weight. My hair is falling. I'm very tired. My periods are altered. It's a real entity, clinical entity, the secondary hypothyroidism, very rare. It's not common. It's very rare. Less than 1% of the cases of hypothyroidism have, uh, are secondary hypothyroidism. But the important thing is the free T4 in these patients must be below normal because otherwise you don't have hypothyroidism. You know, to, to have secondary hypothyroidism, you, have hypo you need to have hypothyroidism, which is the hallmark of hypothyroidism is a free T4 that's below normal. Now, how about the symptoms? Unfortunately, all symptoms of hypothyroidism are not pathognomonic, meaning they're not specific for hypothyroid. They can be caused by anything, by other diseases, by comorbidities, anemia, iron deficiency, obesity. Menopausal syndrome is the number one confounding factor. They have done double-blinded studies just based on symptoms. You cannot tell who has hypothyroid or who doesn't. All right, let's unpack all of that because there's a lot there.